Well, thank you for joining me. I'm Tom Lauks, Communications Director, City of Marshfield, and we're doing a candidate preview here today. And today I have Evan Dayton with me. Uh, he's going to be running in dist for District 10 against uh, Peter Hendler. And uh, we're gonna get to know Evan quite a bit more here uh, over this next half hour. Again, thank you for joining us uh, and listening in to this candidate preview for the spring election, which is coming up in April. So Evan, thank you so much for coming by. Yeah, thank you. You bet. All right, well, let's start off with the 17 questions that I have here for you. You had a chance to look at them, that's great. Um, let's talk about, uh, to get to know you a little bit, tell me about yourself. So a little bit about myself, like, like Tom said, my name is Evan Dayton. I'm running for District 10 Alderman. I'm a write-in. Um, just a little bit about myself. I'm a father of three, um, been married for five years. Uh, just recently finished my bachelor's degree in business management. Um, just actually did a month or so ago. Uh, same goes for also completed my uh, certification in HR management as well, along with that degree. So I really got a chance to get a feel for how to not only manage as well as learn to get to know how to handle HR situations um, as well. Um, I've worked, lived in Marshfield for about seven years. Uh, got to get to know the area, um, known Marshfield most of my life as well, um, actually all my life to be honest. <laughs> got to uh, really get to know District 10 um, as well. I've lived in District 10 for about five years. Uh, got to know the area. Um, really looking forward to starting to make a difference as well as starting to represent some people um, as well taking the first step in the process and you know, doing stuff for people. All right well congratulations on the on the business degree that's not Thank an you. easy uh, uh, degree to get and uh, you know, that's awesome that you're able to do that and you're getting involved in, in local government that's uh, very important and this is a, a great step. Uh, let's talk about that District 10. Just for those that may not know it, where is that located? So District 10 is the northeast corner of Marshfield. Uh, it includes the Marshfield High School as well as it expands back behind closer to Walmart as well. All right. And you said you have lived there for about five years now? Yep. And uh, there's some change actually, a lot of growth in that area, right? We were talking yep. about earlier. Yeah, no? exactly. There's a lot of growth. We've been seeing a lot of apartment complexes and such pull up around the high school as well. Uh, so definitely starting to see a lot of new faces around uh, compared to what we've seen in the past. All right. All right. Well, what brings you here? What intrigues you about local government uh, to want to run uh, for alderman? I think the big thing that really focuses with wanting to run for alderman, you know, I really looking to represent and be that person that people can turn to. Um, I've definitely seen a lot of it in just in my career that I've had over the past few years as well, being in management, and I've seen, you know, a lot of people don't have voices for them, and, and I would love to be that voice for people that are in my district as well as, you know, starting to make a difference for them, you know, listening to them and hearing what they have to say and what they'd like to see, and being that person to represent them. All righty. Well, there's always a lot of issues going on in local government, state politics, even on the federal, as we all know, we hear every day on TV, radio, in the newspaper, online. Uh, what are you most passionate about when it comes to local issues here in Marshfield? I think the big thing you really need to consider, you know, especially when it comes to local government, is a lot of times that's where it starts. That's where it all starts. It all boils down to these are the people you're representing, and if they're not represented well on the lower levels, you know, it doesn't stack well as it goes up the chain, you know, state, federal, and up. You know, you, they need to have their voices heard and being that person to represent them and be their voice when they can't be is huge for, you know, everybody local. And that's the big thing that I want to do is be that voice. Uh, back in, in earlier days of your, of your life, even back to high school, maybe college, did, did you see yourself getting into doing this or is this something that just has now as you got, grow older, have a family? What it just does that for you, huh? <laughs> right? And, that, and that's the big thing, you know. I've seen, you know, thinking back to high school and stuff. It wasn't. I'll be honest. It wasn't really on my radar. Um, you know, as time went on, you know, having a family, you know, it, it's all about starting to see their future. You know, especially with my kids and being there. You know, being a representative, and being the one that can help out. You know, help with their future and such. You know, I, I enjoy living in Marshfield, and it's a great place to live that I've, you know, had the experience of. And I would love to have a good future for them, 
and then especially you know and being by the high school I see a lot of kids each and every week you know obviously with COVID we've had a slight restriction of that mm -hmm. but I've seen you know I see kids all the time walking around you know it's it's their future and their their area you know we want to see something good for them going forward yeah kids definitely change on how you look uh at life and, and I had the same thing um, about 13 years ago having my first uh, uh, child and uh, it's been a great rewarding experience uh, and you learn a lot and I just did it much later in my life <laughs> than I wanted to do that so well if you're just tuning in uh, today I'm uh, we're doing a candidate preview with District 10 uh, candidate Evan Dayton uh, he isn't on the ballot he's a write-in so if you when you do go to the ballot and you don't see his name uh, you can add it on there, and, and that is an official uh, a tally. Uh, you can't just write in Mickey Mouse any longer. Uh, it, and that, you know, that, that's used to be the case, but Evan actually registered uh, to be a write-in with the clerk's office. So, uh, so just uh, gets that information out, and uh, he is a, a candidate for District 10. And uh, again, I thank you for coming. I really appreciate that. And getting uh, some uh, a different uh, voice out there about what's going on. Well, let's, let's go to number five here. That's uh, of my 17. Yeah, you've been watching our meetings, probably our finance meetings, and we do them online, Facebook, television, you name it. Um, the mayor usually picks uh, people to be on a, a committee like Board of Public Works or Finance, Budget, and Personnel. Uh, I guess, is there any of those that, that would, if you uh, are in the seat here, would want to do to give the mayor uh, like a heads up? Yeah, I definitely, you know, I've been doing and watching like, quite a few actually um, committees as well uh, across the board. And the, the big one would be obviously the finance. Um, that's a huge deal. You know, nowadays we think about, you know, the COVID and everything, the way it's affected across the board. And, you know, finances are huge. Um, being able to, they make the difference and definitely are something that does affect everybody as well as local governments. And the other one as well, I, development and planning committees. Um, I enjoy to really work with that. You know, we've seen Marshfield grow a bit, like in my district as well, and I'd love to see that continue and, you know, the area explode basically, <laughs> expand and create something better and give the option for people to come in and expand on that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And, you know, uh, Marshfield's a nice town, to, a great place to raise a family. And, uh, you know, the city is a part of that process to make that happen. And it works its way up, as like you say. So let's talk a little bit about time commitment. As you know, uh, there's a lot of time involved in being an alderman. Uh, it's not just going to a co uh, two council meetings a month. Uh, do you have the time uh, to represent your district well? Yeah, definitely. And, you know, it's one of those things I'm huge on, you know, communication. You know, if anybody's got anything going on, you know, feel free to reach out. That's the big thing that I've always gone by, you know, especially in my past jobs as well, you know, in management, because a lot of times I was salary and I was around. You know, if, if you need help, ask, you know, and that's the big thing. And I'm willing to take the time to help somebody out, whether it's come over and meet with them or, you know, feel free to reach out is a big thing for me. All right, and right now that's what you're doing, I bet, going mm -hmm. around to your neighbors and uh, telling people about yourself. Yeah. That's, uh, that's, that's part of the process uh, when you're uh, go going to be elected that everyone has to do. It's yeah. not just you and unique. Everybody's got to get out there, and it's not easy to, to do that. So you're, yeah. you're right on your way to, <laughs> to learning all that. Uh, let's talk about Main Street downtown. Uh, it's a big part of uh, of Marshfield, as we know. We drive right down the middle of it, which is yep. which is a good thing because uh, you know some towns have the the original malls, and then they, you didn't have and you lost your downtown or vice versa. But do you feel it's healthy, successful? If not, what would you change? Your thoughts on our downtown? Um, I think you know, obviously, um, I recently saw too, and you know, I haven't had a chance to stop in yet, but I saw the record shop record shop just opened in there, so I, that's a very cool. Like, thing to see um, as well I'd like to see especially with downtown I'd love to see more there uh, you know it's it's one of those things you know it's kind of like the staple in the center of the city um, we definitely want to see obviously we see a lot of the times businesses open up out you know out by Walmart or whatnot um, but definitely would be cool to see you know a lot more focus on downtown um, we see the different events we have downtown but I, but I would definitely like to see more businesses down there 
uh, a lot more focus on more being down there for the you know people of Marshfield as well as you know outside you know we got hub city days and stuff that's normally downtown we want to be able to have that opportunity you know shopping out and you know helping support local businesses a lot of times that's what we see in there and that's what I would love to see a lot more local businesses in there Alrighty, well downtown is an important part of uh, Marshfield and, and really any town. Uh, as you can see, I've, as you've been seeing, downtowns are, are it's not new, but they, they are, are they're coming back. Mm -hmm. And uh, definitely with people even living above them, I'm hearing. Yep. Uh, the, the, you know, it's back to the old days of walking to the grocery store. Yeah. Um, I think that's actually happening in uh, the generation that we're in, the millennial generation. Um, maybe the generation after that, I see that, that happening now. It'll all work its way. It, it seems to be a, a, a revolving uh, circle uh, in our lifetime. Uh, I'm older. I had a chance when I was eight, seven or eight years old uh, to really get a chance to see what downtowns were like. Um, they're amazing, uh, busy, n n stores everywhere. And, uh, and you get a chance, I bet, to see some of those old photos even uh, not the 50s, even though I'm not from the 50s, but look at all the people that were in downtown. Wouldn't that be neat to see that again? It would be. Yep. It would definitely be very neat to see. Yep. Well, maybe maybe uh, there's a time that'll happen again. We'll have to see how that goes and and uh, see how it goes. Let's talk about uh, government waste. We hear that term a lot, and I'm not saying it's happening here, but um, if so, what would you do about it? If there is government waste, do you see government waste? Uh, you listen to these meetings. Uh, last uh, fall, there was a lot of talk about budgets and, and the mayor brought out plenty of reasons of what we were spending our money on. Mm -hmm. What would, what do you feel about that and where would you go with that? I, I think the big thing, you know, especially watching, you know, obviously I'm not closely knit with the budget, but uh, the big thing is, you know, making sure the big thing I would really watch for, especially if I get on the finance committee, would be, you know, where is this budget going? Why are we, you know, spending the money here? Um, why is it here? And so on and so forth. And really, especially with COVID and such, we need to make sure we're spending, spending it correctly to help out the people in Marshfield as well. You know, we want to be able to allocate the right resources across the board. Okay. Well, uh, earlier again, we were talking about uh, downtown just a little bit ago. Uh, let's talk about uh, things that the city's doing right now in regards to building new homes, you know, uh, revamping old homes, existing space, uh, new commercial spaces we see in Industrial Park uh, grow here uh, and there, and as well as some new businesses downtown like uh, you've been seeing, like you mentioned, the record shop. Um, is is do you see uh, that being, a, what do you see the most important the city should be doing right now in regards to that? Uh, I think the big thing is, you know, make sure across the board everything's kind of a, accounted for for that matter. Um, obviously we need to maintain as well with the apartment building, you know, that's a big thing right now. A lot of people are really enjoying the apartments. Um, as well as, you know, focusing on the older structures and whatnot, um, bringing them up to code and whatnot with local businesses uh, like you mentioned earlier the apartments and people living above them in downtown you know that's a big deal you know having that close access as well um, as well as utilizing what we do have um, so there definitely would be, need to be you know continued focus on everything on all fronts all right uh, number 10 on our questions uh, of number of 17 of those if uh, people are following along I want to know where we're at uh, transportation and uh, right now we use a, a cab service out of Sparta um, I guess is how do you feel that's going uh, generally for the elderly and people that don't have vehicles uh, do you feel it's going well or is something different or I, I think you know just kind of think about the transportation that we do offer with the cab service um, I think right now it all depends on where the area is, you know, actually to be honest, uh, focusing on making sure they do have that option, you know, as well as other options. Uh, it is good to have it for them as well, and, and I would like to see that continue. Um, possibly ex excessive options, you know, obviously if I'm not mistaken, they have uh, a bus service as well that they kind of offer as well. Um, that we've seen from time to time around Marshfield, and I, I love, would love to see that continue and keep on that right path um, as well. Yeah, and I think 
Wood County does some of that. I've seen, and I'm not sure what that's that is. I've seen a smaller bus. It might be something to do with with Wood County, but. Um, yeah, you know, I, I don't know if we'd be like Stevens Point, a little bit different because it's a university town. They have a, a large bus system. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, basically what you're, you're telling me that, that uh, you know, ideas are on the table. Yep. And, and uh, but right now the bus, ser or the bus service, the, uh, <laughs> the cab service is working uh, okay in, in, in where we're going. Okay, great. <coughs> great. Um, let's talk about, uh, how would you get people more engaged in the local government like yourself? Because you're getting involved. How do you get more people like yourself involved? I, I think the big thing that really has kind of driven me is being involved in, you know, doing it for, you know, not only for making a difference, but also doing it for the future generations as well. And I, I've seen a lot of that just kind of talking with a few people that, you know, it's, it's the voices that need to be heard, um, you know, locally around the area you know be that voice you know feel free to reach out you know we want to make sure that everybody's being heard and make sure that everybody's aware of what's going on you know if, if everybody's not in the loop could make mean for a bad situation yeah and you know social media is a whole different animal and being uh, uh, <laughs> a local uh, uh, local uh, alderman those those are real decisions I'm not saying social media isn't real but there's a lot on there that isn't true. You, can, you have to watch what you're reading. Yep. And you have to be very careful of that. Here, whole different world. You're actually dealing with real people's money. Uh, Forty-some million dollar budget a year. So uh, you, uh, you're, you're seeing the importance of it. Yep. And uh, that's great. All right, well, let's move on here. Uh, talking about any steps that you would do uh, to keep us uh, financial sta financially stable as you may have heard that uh, we had issues uh, on how our TIF districts were uh, paying, getting paid back and then our budget was way in the negative and uh, I, that has been fixed as I've understood. Uh, yeah. I guess is there, you know, what do you do to, to make sure that you're, you're, you're doing the right things with the money? I, I think the big thing like I touched on earlier with the budget is, you know, making sure that resources are allocated correctly is a big focus I would have. Uh, is making sure that the resources are going to the right things as well as you know not only like police budget um, you know fire management and so on and so forth you know we, we would want to make sure everything's covered appropriately and has the right amount of funds needed to operate um, and as well as account for what does it do bringing back to the taxes and whatnot of the people living here where does that affect and you know what does it have to do to um, be accounted for and is the operating budget correctly for this and that. All right. Well, we have a few more questions to ask Evan Dayton. Uh, he's running for District 10 uh, for the spring election. Uh, the incumbent uh, is Peter Hendler. And uh, we're going to go into our next questions. Thanks again for joining us here. Let's talk about the pandemic. That's not been a fun thing for anybody at, around the world. And you know, we're seeing uh, a decrease in, in the virus, which is great uh, in our area, as well as a lot of areas in, in, in the state, as well in the, as the United States. Uh, let's talk about how the city's been handling that, uh, city government. Uh, how do you feel that they've been doing or would there should have there been something different handled? Uh, with that, uh, I guess trying to get your perspective on that. I, I think based on the situation that we're in, um, obviously we're seeing less cases, which is great. Like you mentioned, that, that is a great thing. We want to see it go in the right direction, you know, not only for people in general, but for everybody. Um, we want to see that go across the board. And, and the big thing, you know, just kind of looking at what, you know, City Hall has done, you know, what Marshfield's done as a city, uh, I think the big thing would be, you know, obviously accordingly with the mask update, um, and making sure we're doing that. Um, I, I would love to see a city hall back opened up, um, you know, especially for everybody, you know, being able to access it as well, you know, and be able to obviously pay their bills and such. Um, I know a lot that do do that for that matter. And, you know, I would like to see that option available to them again. All righty. Well, well, hopefully that'll happen soon. I think we all want to get away from uh, closing our doors and locking them. We're a part. Uh, city wants to help uh, be a service to the to the residents, and I think everyone's looking forward to opening those doors here soon. Let's talk about uh, ordinances and things like junk cars, things that 
garbage piled up, TVs, you know, you know you, you're a homeowner. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you're seeing any of that in District 10 or not, but um, is there anything uh, that you could, uh, would like to say about, about that, maybe what you could do to help it if you see there's a problem, maybe you don't see there's a problem, I'm not sure. I just want to hear from you on regarding uh, these kinds of uh, things that are, I've heard are happening. Gotcha, gotcha. So I, I've seen, you know, occasionally, you know, like I mentioned, you know, stuff on the street corner and whatnot. Usually, um, at least in District 10, a little bit I've been around it um, recently, at least. Um, obviously, with COVID, you know, can't really go <laughs> as far. But, um, but I've definitely seen a lot, you know, now that it's getting to be springtime, I see that's most of the biggest time. A lot of people do, do their spring cleaning. We see a lot of people cleaning things out. Uh, the, bi the biggest thing would be obviously, you know, obviously touching base with a lot of people is the aspect of you know being respectful you know obviously we don't want to see junk pile on the side of the road garbage day was a day ago and you're putting it all out there now um you know on the aspect of that you know touching base and be like all right you know i get you want to get rid of this but you know what what can we do to help out and whatnot um i know like the waste management services you know as offers pick up and whatnot usually they're really good about it if you give them a call so that'd be the big thing would be touching base with you know obviously the residents in that situation you know offering them the options and such to help out all right and we'll get more word about uh what they can do and what they can't do with it is important uh what you're telling us uh i know some cities like wasa and larger cities may have uh, a day for junk i don't think marshfield as i know has anything like that but maybe that that that's an idea down the road i've heard other uh, I call them wards, but we'll call them districts here, <laughs> that uh, just do a day of cleanup. So uh, I guess those are all things that, that, that can be thought about. And uh, uh, I guess right now that, you know, people have to make sure that they're following the ordinance that's put in place. And you're willing to, you're saying you're willing to uh, give them information and help make that a better situation for everyone. Absolutely. All right, let's talk about how do you foster better relationships with other elected officials and staff of the city uh, or even the public uh, in general in your district and outside your district what do you what do you do to I know you've touched on by getting out uh, other ideas yeah I think the big thing you know is always having that uh, transparency uh, that, that's a huge thing you know a lot of times you know hey this is the situation you know being very transparent on things going on is huge you know for helping out and you know working together I see that's a lot of the times if you're not transparent about things, it's going to be a two-edged sword almost, um, you know, in both directions. So we want to be able to make sure that uh, transparent on things and people are in the loop on things um, as well. And that and that's a big thing, you know, working with who we're working with and, you know, towards one goal and being successful and, you know, doing what's best for, obviously in this case, the city of Marshfield. Okay. And, uh, y you know, y you uh, earlier, when you talk about yourself, uh, earlier mentioned about yourself, I should say, uh, HR is part of what you what you do. So there's a lot of uh, similarities in how you work together when you become talking about HR. Yeah, <laughs> so, exactly. So you uh, you do have that uh, that way of bringing that uh, to the table and information that you've learned. Let's talk about any issues in District 10. It sounds like a, a quiet district, which is good. We don't want anything issues happening there. Is there anything out there that that you see that needs to be changed or talked about in District 10? I, I think the big thing, you know, with District 10, obviously, it's, it's a growing district for certain. We've seen, you know, a lot of developments and such starting up in District 10 and as well as being successful. Um, I would definitely love to see a focus on the roads. Uh, we, we've seen a lot of, you know, especially around the high school and such, we got a lot of the block roads and stuff that are nearby i would love to see a focus on that as well as get, giving a better option uh, especially there's a lot of duplexes and such where people have multiple cars having them that option to safely park on the side of the road would be a great option for them as well and that's, that's my biggest focus that i would love to see change in district 10. all right sounds good well we put a plug in uh for the department that uh we are myself uh, and david our producer here the city's communications department uh, we're, we're open to all ideas. We're a new department, like I mentioned, just a little over two years, mm -hmm. and uh, really wanted to get a way to better to uh, communicate uh, uh, things to people like you, uh, to aldermen, to staff, 
generally everybody in the city and, and how do you do that? I guess uh, we've tried several uh, new options, new ways. Uh, any suggestions that uh, you would like to see from the city or us and how we, how we communicate to residents? I think the big thing would be obviously the local access is huge. Um, you know, a lot of the younger generation doesn't focus on that. They focus a lot of social media. Uh, I think that's the biggest place to focus. You know, social media is a big deal. Um, a lot of people use it pretty consistently, nine out of ten hours of the day. <laughs> Everybody knows a lot of people are on it when they're working and whatnot, and always checking in and on breaks. You know, and that's the biggest focus that a lot of the times that I see is, you know, that we're in the generation, the technology generation, that that's where our focus is, and that's the big thing that I've noticed a lot of people are really focused on is that um, social media presence would be the biggest thing. And definitely uh, that smartphone is really what they're using a lot more than even back in the day of a desktop. Don't you yeah. see yourself or even your friends, colleagues, uh, on a phone rather than probably going to your monitor, turning it on. Sometimes that's the last thing you want to do <laughs> at your house after you've been sitting in front of it all day, right? Mm -hmm. uh, mobile device is much easier and, and uh, you know, since 2000, I say five, that really has uh, changed our world uh, oh, yeah. a lot. Uh, and I, I'm thinking it's right around that 05. I was in the news, newspaper industry since uh, 89. Uh, newspapers were the only way to get the information out. Um, but you know, yeah, great. We appreciate uh, you know you you mentioning that, and then our viewers able to see that. And uh, we did uh, have a chance to bring in our uh, Facebook uh, live, uh, which is something that David and I wanted to do, and and it's been very successful. We get quite a few viewers on it, and and hopefully you're one of those. So, anything else that you want to bring up? We went through all 17 questions and uh, learned a lot about yourself. That's great. I don't have much else to say sure. other than uh, definitely look forward to meeting more people in my district as well and you know expanding you know hearing out what they want to see. Uh, that's my biggest focus is obviously being transparent as well as wanting to make a difference to them and be there for them. So that, that's the biggest thing I want to focus on and continue to focus on all the way up to the election. Alrighty. Well I want to thank you Evan for coming by and sharing that information. Much appreciated. I know our viewers appreciate that as well. When you go to the polls, you definitely want to know who you're voting for. You don't want to see a name, although your name, again, is not on the ballot. I want to make people to understand they have to write it in, and uh, that will count. So uh, if you will only see right now on the ballot of District 10, if you're in District 10, because if you're in District 8, you're not going to see it at all. <laughs> but in District 10, you will just see Peter Hendler, but you can write in Evan Dayton if you so choose. So. Just wanted to provide that information. You don't see that too often, but uh, this gives a chance, uh, this show, to for people uh, that are watching to learn more about you, and, and then they can call you as well. Uh, do you want to leave a number? That's up to you. If you don't, uh, I'm fine with that. Uh, you have a phone number you want to leave? And, or with yes, I'll have you mention that online here. All right. If you guys want to reach out to me and have any questions for me, feel free to reach out, uh, phone or text. Uh, phone number is 715-937-4661. All righty. Thank well, you. All right. Well, we'll leave it at that, and uh, we'll let you get home here. We're doing this late in, uh, in the evening. Not too late, but late. And uh, we hope that the people of District 10 get out and vote. That's really important as coming up here in April, and it's not long ago. Oh, about a month away from now. We're March 3rd here today on a, yep. on a Thursday taping this already. I believe it's, th no, it's Wednesday. Wednesday. I'm already <laughs> ahead of myself. All right, well, I'll, I'll sign off. I'm Tom Lokes, Communications Director. Thank you for watching our candidate preview uh, with Evan Dayton. Uh, he's a candidate for District 10 uh, going against uh, Mr. Hendler, Peter Hendler, uh, that also currently is in District 10. Thanks again for watching.